And today we're going to spend some time with the First Lady of the Royal House Chapel International and um, the Reverend Mrs. Mrs. Rita Crunchyankra. Okay. We have a great conversation with her. Yeah. You did the conversation? No, uh, it was Pastor Ato Akwa uh, of Joy Time and his presence on Joy FM. They had a, a beautiful conversation uh, about, you know, Mother's Day, you know, Joy Time and his presence, what they're doing the, for the entire week is to dedicate the week to wow. women. And so they've been speaking to some really great women. And this was a conversation had in her house. So, you know, some, some great atmosphere, but very insightful conversation. If you're a single person, this is a conversation you, you want to listen to. And then there was also a bit for people who are married. Ah, yeah. So this is an great open advice. conversation and with Mrs. Uh, Rita Crunchy Ankara and uh, Pastor Ato Akwa. But that's coming up uh, here on the show. We also do have a conversation on house health. What I want to find out what you think about house health in general. You think it's, it's a good thing or bad? Um, for me, I don't really like house health. But sometimes after you get married or you're a couple, you get faced with a reality mm -hmm. with, without uh, outside assistance or a nearby family assistance sort of. You have to face the reality that perhaps um, you are two working parents and you can't keep a home running. Yeah. Um, that is if you're outside the home. Yeah. And once you start having kids, graciously, you also have to acknowledge that you need assistance of yeah. some form. But beyond all that is also the subject of responsibility that you also need to add to the family setup. Because when you bring somebody who is young, you have to treat the person as a member of the family mm -hmm. so that the person doesn't think that it's a burden when the person is helping at home. Yeah. And then you should also become the mother figure or the father figure by also complementing the activities they do or kind of doing some some chore so it's seen as an example, etc. Yeah. So when you bring somebody into the home, you have to make sure the person also goes to school, actually goes to the same school like your kids, Yeah. you know, eventually. Because this is family. And then the, and then the treatment has to be seen as a... I always advise you bring somebody who is young because these days the burden of young couples in terms of how they run their home, it's not the same like if you if you were adults or if you had adult children. Mm. So it's like just in a small house, a small compound, and so the burden of chores are not as strenuous Minimal. as they are. Usually, when you you start having children, you, you, there's a lot more work because you have to carry babies, you have to change diapers, you have yeah. to help out, and the woman is always stressed. And we the men don't tend to empathize very often, even though we claim that we do it. <laughs> we don't really tend to know what the real yeah. picture is. Yes. I like this perspective that you bring, because I didn't initially think about how old the person should be. So even before you make a move to get support, you should think about well, but my at what age. And but, you like but, but children. But my experience... It's also because of the things that happen in the society and the movies that we've seen. Mm. Sometimes you see adults, males uh, trying to get an attracted to the house, you, you know that kind of thing. So like what, uh, I think the perception was to, uh, the, the perception was to get a, a young person, yeah, somebody who who is not too old, who will feel part of the setup mm. that you also not burden. You know, so you have to be mindful of that. And I somebody that. who also grow with your children. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My uh, my view would be slightly different from yours. I'm not I'm not sure about children. I seen you you are, you, are, you are not a house person. I, I I'm looking at somebody who's uh, who's an adult. Yeah. So if it's learning a skill, mm. because the whole idea of getting that support is so that that person can get more time than you probably would in terms of the cleaning and things like that. And these days. You actually need presence in the home. So it's not just about somebody cleaning or, the, or anything of the sort, but you need somebody so that at any point, every or anybody would know that, oh, this house, there's always somebody there. Because sometimes that's just because there's presence, it puts away thieves and well, you know, that, criminals that's, and that, petty. That's on the part of the security. Yeah. But then the other one I would, I would like is somebody who comes in and out. Hmm. Like maybe a nanny type of okay. person. That's okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Or a cleaning yeah. person. So we're looking at all that, but it would be good to hear what you think as well. Uh, what What is your thinking about house health? The reality is, with all the things that we tend to do as women these days, we certainly need support. But what kind of support? What do you think about house health? And the men usually don't like house health. So 
how are they helping in the home as well uh, that conversation just let your thoughts known use our what's whatsapp number that's on your screens right now and we're going to share your messages as well uh, but let's bring you this conversation that pastor atwak of joy fm had with mrs rita crunchy ankara it's a conversation that we all must listen to especially when we're looking up uh, on mother's day well i should ask you how do you feel as a woman I think God didn't make a mistake in making me a woman. So I'm happy as a woman. I'm complacent as a woman. I enjoy being a woman. I love being a woman. I love it when I wake up and I have to take care of my home. I love it when I have to take care of my children. I love it when I have to take care of my husband, my kitchen. I love it when I travel and I have to buy my bone china and my cutleries. I mean, I love it when I go to the salon to do my nails, to do my hair. I love it when I look into the mirror and I tell myself I am wonderfully and fearfully, fearfully made. made. I just love being a woman I see. where I don't have to think where electricity bill is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> how I'm going to pay the school fees of my children. I mean, I love being a woman. Wow. I love being a woman. Where I have somebody as the head, mm. and I only, only have to follow. Support. I love that rule. Wow. That sounds like fun, being a woman. But that is not what we tend to hear, you know, or get to know. Um, we are in a society where when the picture of a woman is drawn, um, it's... It's, it's as though the woman goes through all the stresses of life. The woman, uh, as far as the human race is concerned, is, is the one who goes through all the challenges. And, and it's so painful, you know, to be uh, a woman. So I want to begin from a single woman. What do you think some of the challenges of singlehood are that we go, we've got to understand and accept as normal? And, and it's just a passing phase. I think the problem as a single woman is that everybody's looking up to you, especially when you get to 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, it becomes more serious when you get to 30 and then beyond 30. People are asking questions. Mm. Why is she not married? What's happening to her? Is she not married because she doesn't have the character? Is she not married because she's looking down on the men um, that are coming? I mean, people ask too many questions. But Mama but Rita, is that supposed to be the measuring stick no. uh, for, for, for a woman? It looks as though if, if, if you are a young woman, you're not married, society seems to frown on you. It's like you haven't, you haven't lived up to expectations. You, you haven't succeeded. You haven't succeeded just because you, 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 you are not married. Personally, I think that with or without a man in your life, you must enjoy life. You're complete. You are complete. With or without a man in your life, you must enjoy the day. Some people are just waiting, waiting for a man to propose, then I'll be happy. Waiting for a man to propose, then I'll be fulfilled. Waiting for a man to, be fu uh, to come, then I'll be complete in my life. Listen, for me, the most important thing in a woman's life is to be educated. That's the first. The second is to know the Lord. Once you're educated and once you know the Lord, relax. Today, after 12 midnight, we'll never come back again. Anytime I wake up in the morning, I tell myself, I'm enjoying the best of today. Why? Because today will not come back. People get married and then they ask themselves, is that all? Mm. Oh, so is that what I was expecting? Is that what I was waiting for? Why didn't I enjoy life? Please enjoy life to the fullest with or without a man in your life. Have a girl's party. Have a girl's go out. Enjoy a good dance when you go to church. When you wake up in the morning, enjoy a good bath. 
prepare a meal, sit behind it, set a table in the presence of your enemies, <laughs> set your cutlery. I mean, enjoy life enjoy as it life. comes. Nobody will make you happy. A lot of people think that when the man comes into your life, then the man makes you happy. Trust me, it's not my, ma my husband that makes me happy. I make myself happy. Wow. I make myself happy. So celebrate womanhood. This is what I believe. And then as parents, as pastors, society must stop expecting the women to be women when they get married, with or without women with or without husbands, let them be happy. Let's stop putting pressure on them. On them. But what I would also have to tell women, single women, time is not also waiting for you. The clock is not waiting for you. Sometimes it has to do with decision taking. From 2023, 20, 24, we look at ourselves and we think that we have so many years ahead of us. So we can keep bouncing the men when they come. We can keep being very selective. Only for us to realize that 24, 25, 26, and then 30. After 30, now what happens? Then we ourselves, we begin to stress ourselves. We are not able to relax. We go to church and instead of concentrating on service, concentrating on God, concentrating on prayer, concentrating on worship, we are looking at the men that are coming in. Right from 21, start praying. Start praying for the man that will come. Start asking God to lead you so you don't make a mistake. A mistake. I remember very well when I was in school during our time, we used to write the O-levels. Then before our exams, one of our Catholic nuns, a sister in the school, took us through a retreat. Before the retreat ended, then she said, start praying for your future partners. That was in secondary school? That was in secondary school, form five. We were 17, 18, 19. When she said that, we all giggled. It sounded really, really funny for a 17-year-old, an 18-year-old, 19, to start praying for a future partner. We giggled and we laughed. But you know what happened? It left a mark on me. Something registered in my spirit. I wasn't born again then, but something registered in my spirit. After then, I felt, let me start praying for my future partner. So right from age 18, I started praying. 19, I was praying. 20, I was praying. 21, I was praying. 21, I became born again. I didn't stop praying. 22, then at 23, no, 22, a man comes into my life. I see. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't looking up to it. I was being myself, enjoying my singleness, enjoying life as it comes. I was enjoying my relationship with the Lord and I was enjoying my relationship so well with the Lord. People were coming to my life expecting that I should fall in love with them. And you can see that when they talk about you falling in love with them, it's not for marriage. They just want to enjoy your body. body. They come and I, I just tell them, you know what? I've fallen in love with a man. His name is Jesus. And they thought there was something crazy wrong with me. with you. They thought there was something wrong with me. I enjoyed my life with the Lord. I think because I prayed and I prayed so well, I never made a mistake. I didn't wait for three men to come and to say, out of the three men, Who do I C, 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 Nanako, <laughs> which of the three men do I choose? I mean, it came so natural with me. By age 23, I was engaged. 24, I was married. 25, I had had my firstborn. I see. I think the problem is with we getting ready 
what is the readiness what is the preparation praying into the marriage I believe that if we pray and we pray well we won't be bouncing every man as they come we won't be looking at who is rich who is handsome who is tall who is better educated who speaks better English who I believe if we are prepared spiritually immediately the man comes it will, we click. will know it will click we won't wait for 30 years and above and now be stressed we will we'll be stressful and start going through deliverances and think there's something wrong with us listen if you are single enjoy life as it comes relax don't be too anxious do your homework well and if I talk about homework praying into the marriage and trust me the man will come and you will know it it will click the, we are having a chat with the first lady of Royal House Chapel, Reverend Mrs. Rita Crunchy Ankara. And uh, nuggets that I'm very sure you should have put down by now is that singlehood is a phase in, in your life as a woman. You've got to enjoy it. Your inability to enjoy the fullness of your singlehood will affect the other, the subsequent phases or the subsequent stages of your life as a woman. And so enjoy singlehood. Two, you should have written down by now that your relationship with God is paramount. And get yourself some good education. Educate yourself. Take yourself through some schooling. Learn something. Be independent. Be a full human being yourself before another person comes into your life. Because a man doesn't come to complete you. A man comes when you're already complete. And so that's what we've learned so far from uh, Mama Rita, as we affectionately uh, call her. She shared a little bit of her experience that right from her teenage, she was told to pray uh, as far as her marriage is concerned. Since it, it's marriage is a, is a huge thing as far as uh, women are concerned, in our part of the world especially. Start praying about it now. Mama Rita, for those who are saying, well, they, for you, it was, it, it was luck that you you had to marry early um, I've been praying a woman may be listening to us or watching us who is saying that I've been praying um, right from my early 20s it looks as though there's something basically wrong that is uh, why and they are hitting their 40s now I'm a pastor I, where I sit I get such messages when we sit on the radio you know and 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 and, and we encourage people some tell you i'm getting to 40 i'm becoming depressed in fact depression has become a real issue when it comes to women and marriage especially those who are heading towards their 40s number one what is the cause number two what's the way out okay well you might say i am fortunate but i would say i am blessed number two it's not just being blessed but how I ordered my steps. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You think that you have a long time ahead of you. Ahead of you. So you start messing up. You start moving from brother A to brother B to brother C to brother D. Sleeping all around. They forget that they'll get to 26, they'll get to 27, they'll get to 28, they'll get to 29. Stop messing around. Mm. Number two, sometimes we are too selective. Okay. Trust me, when my husband came, there was nothing about him to tell me that his future would be like this. He was not the Apostle General we see today. He wasn't an Apostle he, General. He wasn't a pastor. There were no signs of... There was no sign. He didn't have a bicycle. <laughs> he didn't have a bicycle tie. All he had was his degree. Even when I met him, he didn't have a degree. He was still at the University of Ghana. That's all he had. He didn't have a room. 
He didn't have a, pay, a bed. When I met him, all he had was Christ, his education, his trunk, and his troubles. You virtually started from ground zero. We started from ground zero. What made you believe in a man like that? Was it not risky? Was your future not at stake? Wasn't he going to frustrate you somewhere along the line? That is what some people thought. Some people looked at him, looked at me, and thought, why would you go out with a man like this? He has nothing. He, th he didn't even have a job. <laughs> when we were getting engaged, he didn't have a job. He hadn't completed the University of Ghana. We had our engagement in February. He completed in June. So people thought there was something wrong with me. Family members thought there was something wrong with me. You were beautiful. You were educated. You still are. Thank you. <laughs> but it's not the same after going to the labor world four times. <laughs> Why don't you wait for some rich guy to come? Why don't you wait for at least somebody who has a two-bedroom house? Why don't you wait for at least somebody who has a job? Which you could have got. Which I could have got. Looking at my guitar shape at the time. Hmm. I was slim and beautiful. Why didn't you wait? So this is the problem with the current generation. We are waiting for already cooked. We are waiting for fast food. We are waiting for somebody who put food on our table. We are waiting. So they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait and they realize that it's they don't late. have a, you, There is no perfect human being. At the time I met my husband, he was so skinny. <laughs> he walks and the wind blows <laughs> him like this. You could see him in his t-shirt. How are you? How are you? How are you? So this is my issue with the current ladies of today. It's not like the men are not coming. The men are coming, but they are extremely selective. selective. Is there a point at which they don't come again? Because I've had comments like, uh, oh, pastor, the men are not coming. It's not like the men are coming. They are not coming. They are just, the proposals are just not coming. I am 35. I am 37. I am 41. Is there a point at which they stop coming? They don't stop. If you are 30, 31, 32, 33, 35, 40, 41, and you are giving up, don't give up. The only thing, recently I was talking to a group of ladies and I'm saying 32, 33, 34. Any man that comes, first you need to ask questions. Why is he not married? Okay. Why that? Any serious minded person, gentleman, start looking for a serious minded lady from age 26. I see. 27, 28, 30 years and above, most of them are set in their ways. 35, you would either go in for somebody who is divorced or somebody whose wife is dead. So it's always good to try your best up to 30, 31, 32. From age 33, the truth is that you are delaying. But then, I believe in God so much. God works miracles. Don't give up. No. I've seen people get married at age 35. I've seen people get married at age 37. I've seen people get married at age 40. I've even seen women get married at age 45. Recently, hmm. recently, I heard one testimony that blew my mind. Somebody I know very well.
Hmm. Got married at age 50. She's never been married. At age 50? At age Was her first time marrying? Was her first time marrying. Was there a problem? Like I said, we make mistakes. We all make mistakes. The mistakes, number one, we didn't pray enough. Number two, we're too selective. Every man that came, we had an issue. Every man that came, we thought it was not Mr. Right until we reached a particular age and we realized that now the men were not coming. We're not coming. If you are young, as you listen to me, don't be too selective. Mm. But then, if you are 35 years and above, don't also give up. Why? Because we have a God that works miracles. I have seen it so many times, and that God will also do it for you. Don't give up, my darling. The man is coming. All right, then. So there is always hope. No matter how late you think you are, there is always hope. Mama Rita, to round up the, 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 the single woman before we go on to the next phase, what are the principles that um, every single lady under the sound of our voice should learn to abide by as far as fulfilling destiny is concerned because i believe strongly that many a time the single woman or the woman has an identity problem you know knowing who she is finding out who she is and living to fulfill that destiny you know is just out of place and so they tend to think that finding a man will satisfy that that gap eventually when they find a man there's still no satisfaction it turns into marital issues problems here and there so what are the principles undergirding discovering you know yourself and living to fulfill destiny as a woman from my point of view number one i'll say know the lord it's very important seek ye first Kingdom. the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all i mean all not some all including marriage will be given to you and i think that is the first thing i did the god factor the god factor the god factor is so important number two love yourself okay a lot of women do not love themselves Hmm. You are looking for a man. Yet you don't care the way you dress. You don't care what you wear. You don't care about your hair. You don't care about anything. Love yourself. Once you learn to love yourself, you learn to love the one who is coming. That's profound. Say it again. <laughs> Once you learn to love yourself, you also learn to love the one that is coming. You also learn to love your children. Love yourself. Number one, the God factor. Number two, loving yourself. Number three, get to know yourself. So many women do not know themselves. Who are you? What were you made of? Which kind of man do you think would suit you better? She doesn't even know whether she's troublesome. She doesn't even know whether she knows how to smile. She doesn't know if she's a people's person. She, people just do not know anything about themselves. If you don't know anything about yourself, how then do you get to know the man who is coming? You don't know your temperament. Mm. You don't know whether you are choleric. You don't know whether you are sanguine. You don't know whether you are melancholy. You don't know, I mean, you just don't know yourself. What use you? I see. So I, I believe that if women get to know themselves, they will get to know 
that this man that is coming is good for me. If they get to know themselves, they would know that at the end of the day, you make yourself happy, another one that come, is coming into your life. I see. Number one? No God. No God. The God factor, it's so important. Why do you want to go into marriage? Why do you want to have a car? When you don't know about the manufacturer and what he put into the car, who created marriage? It is God. Why would you go in for something yet you don't accept the one that made that thing, that created that thing? The God factor is so it's important. Paramount. Wow. Number two, love yourself as a woman. Love yourself. Once you love yourself, you will get to love the one that is coming. Number three, get to know yourself. Know yourself. Once you get to know yourself, you will know the one that is coming. Once you get to know yourself, you will know how to handle the next person that is coming. Number three, be a confident person. Confidence and arrogance, is it not um, uh, misinterpreted or uh, misrepresented when, when it comes to to, 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 to uh, the woman. Take for instance a single woman who sits at the front desk of a company and um, she's cheeky, she's not nice, she gives very, she's so blunt, you know, and everybody says she's arrogant, she thinks she's confident, it's confidence. Uh, is it not misplaced? Confidence is not arrogance. Arrogance it's not confidence. Being arrogant is being cheeky. Being arrogant is not thinking about what you say. You just throw the words. Being arrogant is hurting people and not care. You know, people just hurt people and they don't care whether the people are hurt or not. Mm. Being arrogant is not being able to say sorry even when you are wrong. But being confident, being confident is knowing that, number one, I am complete okay. as a woman. Being confident is knowing that I am beautiful. And my mirror tells me I'm beautiful. And that's not arrogance. That's not arrogance. Being confident means that if a man is coming my way, I don't care the number of women around him. I don't care the number of women he says hello to. I don't care the number of women he hugs. I am confident he came for me and it's me. I am the woman in his life and it's me. I am the woman in his home. At the end of the day, if he goes round, he comes to me. Being confident means that I'm the woman he took to the altar. Being confident means I'm the woman. He said, I love you too. Mm. Being confident. So confidence has nothing to be with being arrogant. I see. Uh, the summary you've given us as far as history is concerned uh, tells that you are a very happy woman. What's the secret to being a happy married woman? I'll go back to what I said about being single. I am happy because I have the Lord. I am happy because I know I have the Lord behind me. I am happy because I know I have the whole of heaven behind me. I am happy because I am protected. That makes me happy. So much as that makes you a happy single woman, it makes you a happy married woman as, as, as well. And so one singlehood is gotten right. As a married woman, you would have it, you would have it right. I see. Were there challenges you, you came, you came uh, across as a, married, as a married woman from the onset, the early stages especially? And what, what were some of those challenges? Please don't remind me of the past. 
Number one, I have really tasted poverty. You? In those days, if you were looking for the definition of poverty, you needed to look at me and my husband. We got married as two national service personnel. Where our income was very low, extremely low. The income could not take care of us, let alone take care of pregnancy. Unfortunately for me, I think I got locked up the first day or during the honeymoon. I didn't get to enjoy my marriage before I got pregnant. I didn't have parents or I didn't have in-laws sending, sending us off into marriage with a house, with a car, with money in a bank account. Um, I never got that. So we started marriage with nothing. Just by faith? Just by faith. We couldn't afford a decent accommodation. So we found ourselves, ourselves in this small kitchenette room. We couldn't afford a curtain. So I had to use my cover cloth as a curtain. We didn't even have louver blades in our room. So when it rained, the water came into our room. All we had was our trunk and two buses we took to school. All we had was a bed my father gave to us and then a borrowed mattress. That is all. As married people? As married people. As married people. Interesting. At the end of the month, transportation took all our national service allowance. So we'd have to borrow f food. There was somebody that used to sell kinky and fish just around Dakuma Junction where we used to live. So we will borrow, we will go. For kinky, we will go for fish. At the end of the month, when we received our national service allowance, we will go and pay. One food I couldn't stand at the time was kinky. I didn't like kinky. You know, it bites. And anything that bites, I didn't like it. I'll be eating kinky and fish and crying. Crying. I will go for Antidental. And I bet there are so many revelations in that conversation that a lot of us are hearing for the very first time. That's an open conversation with Pastor Atoakwa, and that's Mrs. Rita Crunchy Ankra.